Hello and welcome to the MHG a podcast. As usual, life can be a little bit miserable, life can be a little bit dark. So we're here to bring you a little bit of light and a little bit of joy. And my own personal joy, as always, is Stu. How are you? I'm not too bad, as we were saying before. I've had a had a week of it when it's come to work, but I am looking forward to the weekend. I'm looking forward to making the best of three days of you know, glorious North Wales sunshine, obviously. <laughs> oh, it's bank, bank holiday, isn't it? It is. Wait, um, I can't remember what we're doing. Probably something football related. No. Yeah, we'll definitely have, stuff football related. No, we'll, we'll go into a petting zoo. Oh, and we're going to a petting zoo, and apparently. A and a splash park. On top of football, you know, when you're a parent, this is how your weekends go. You don't, you don't have... Well, I had a splash, but I think I said that, but there you go. <laughs> anyway, talking of having free time, Stu, do you know what you can do with your free time? What's that? Video games, Stu. Ah, yeah, video games. Video games. Um, I've got plenty I've been playing. You've only got the one. Um, so I'm going to let you ask the question. Yeah, so what have you been playing? Right, um, I've been playing, first of all, uh, you'll, you'll never guess, right? It's a roguelike deck builder. Yeah. <laughs> um, based on cards uh, it's called Knock on Coffin Lid uh, not what I originally thought it was called which I thought was called Knock on Coffin Limited it's not it's, not, it's Knock on Coffin Lid um, basically the game is a mix of Slay the Spire and um, Darkest Dungeon I would say is probably the best way to, to describe it um, it's very gothic horror is that a word? Horror? Gothic horror? It is now. Um, it's, it's gothic horror. There's sto- there's a uh, really interesting story, actually. I'll come to that in a second as to why the story is interesting. But basically, you go on a journey um, with your characters, and you have to, um, obviously, it's a deck builder, so you have to sort of like beat enemies, get cards, build your deck, improve your deck to get better against better enemies, move on, do different events that might happen that might help you or hinder you, and then get to the end and then complete a final boss and then go back to the start and redo it all. Nothing new, nothing that's going to break any uh, barriers or, or anything like that. No glass ceilings are being smashed open here. But the gameplay mechanics are really good and interesting. But what carries this game, interestingly enough, is unlike... Sorry, it is six weeks holidays, autistic child. Um, is what, what really carries the game is the story. Um, it's a, no! got a very interesting uh, RPG style story to it that develops as you go and your, your decisions within the game actually have an effect on the story. And what you could do when you beat the final boss the first time has an effect on the overall world, uh, which is really, really good. Um, but it's dark and it's gothic and it's well written. Um, and I say it's one of those I've completed through it once and I went back and yet it's engaging enough that I want to go again with new mechanics new story elements um, the enemy types you face are are varied but not too varied that it just feels random so you, you feel like you can actually have a strategy all those things that are needed for deck builders to make it work are there and as I said there's a really interesting story that goes along with it each of the heroes that you have has their own secrets and their own developing backstory uh, and stuff like that um, so it's one of those if you like Slay the Spire and you do like things like Darkest Dungeon where, where Darkest Dungeon has more story based stuff to it I think this is a great little title to have it's not gonna I say it's not one that's gonna change anyone's minds if you don't like deck builders you're not gonna like this um but it's yeah if you're a fan of them uh, you've got a bit of a scat gap between slain spire 2 coming um then yeah give it a go good enough good enough um and hopefully that wasn't too much autism in there for you in the background <laughs> it's okay it's all okay it's all part of human nature and new human life it is indeed um <laughs> and another quick one that i've been playing that shouldn't take too long before you get to yours is a game called Phantom Spark, um, which on the on the on the surface looks like it's a wipeout clone. Uh, but what this is is more Trackmania 
mixed with uh, wipeout mechanics. So rather than it being a a wipeout game where you've got right, you're, you're properly racing, you've got weapons and you're battling and stuff like that, it is essentially time trials. So you start one end and you go to the other end. Um, and that's basically the game. Um, you start, you, you you set a time and then you basically go, right, you've got this time. Do you want to go back and do it again? Or do you want to move on to the next level? Because you've, you've got a good enough time to move on. Um, and it's really encouraging you, like very quick restarts, which is what all these games need. You go back you beat more times your friends times are on there the best times in the world are on there your next possible time you could beat are all ghosts on the track for you um, the, the tracks are really interesting really varied they're not as futuristic as a wipeout they're more um, they, they seem almost in places inspired by Greek culture uh, that sort of um, aesthetic to it. Um, it it's, but it's one of those I put on. I thought, oh, do you know what? I might play this for 20 minutes, see what it's like and go. But it's... Um, I've, I've put it on and I've been just enamored by the leaderboard, trying to get that extra 0.01 seconds out of it, um, trying to beat your best time, going, oh, I just got caught up on that bit of the track. I know I could do better. All of that side of it is, is, is there and it's absolutely wonderful. As I said, results pop up instantly, so you know if you're doing well, the ghosts are... Are really well done. So some of these are some racing game ghosts. It's the ghosts are either too invisible that you don't quite know they're there, or they're too intrusive. This balances it really, really well. Um, so you can kind of follow through, learn paths and stuff like that without thinking, oh, they're so intrusive, I think I'm going to crash into one. Even though you know you're not, sometimes your brain's going, that's a ghost, I'm going to hit it. Um but yeah, it's um, just it's constantly giving you ways to get better and give you something to target. And yeah, it's an absolute joy of a game that came out of absolutely nowhere for me. Um, and since I installed it, I want to say just over a week and a half ago, I've been on it daily trying to set new times. Yeah, absolutely outstanding. Yeah, cool. Um, I'm definitely going to get it. Um, as it's time trials, I, I'm not... I'm not a huge... I don't get bothered about them very much, do you know what I mean? I don't like yeah. really play things over and over and over just to, to get better times. I like to like beat opponents in stuff. But obviously, with <laughs> there's a cognitive dissonance because I'm obsessed with Wipeout, and this isn't... It's Wipeout adjacent, at least. And uh, so I definitely want it. So I'm just... I don't know. I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the fence. I'll definitely get it, but it's just how soon, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's... <sighs> If you're expecting Wipeout, it's not going to be Wipeout at all. Um, it's just got floaty um, ships. That's, you know, it's like comparing Burnout to um, iRacing. It's, you know, they've both got cars. That's about as close as it comes. Um, it's a completely different game. It is pure time trial. Um, it's easier to control than Wipeout that much I will say that that's one of the things I like I always find when I play Wipeout I've got to relearn how to play it um, but this no I, I, it's easier to control I mean I did go into it first of all going right I know what Wipeout is and I just crashed into walls because I was overcompensating um, and then you realise oh actually it's a lot more forgiving um, for someone like yourself who's a big Wipeout fan I would argue maybe wait for a sale maybe um, but if you're someone who just loves time trialing loves something like Trackmania um, then or even Trials the Trials games in many ways then yeah this is this is definitely worth worth a go but if you're wipe out first this maybe isn't one that you'll be wanting to pick up instantly wait for a sale yeah yeah, that, that kind of aligns with what I was thinking. Mm, yes. Yeah. Or, as as is, is common now with indie games, I could actually say, there's a demo. Yeah. Try the demo. Yeah. <laughs> um, I keep forgetting there's demos more and more these days because we went through a period where nothing had demos. But, yeah, there's a demo, so give that a go. Definitely. Right. What's yours, Stu? So I'm playing one called Beard Blade, which has been out for a few years, but I've always been tempted by, and I got it because it was uh, comparatively cheap. And yeah, it's a 
platforming game in the classic sort of 16-bit era mold. Uh, you'll recognise a lot of stuff from, obviously, like Mario games, but just about everything that ever landed on the Mega Drive and the SNES, really. And, uh, you know, it's very much in that style. Oh, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the hook is that your, your beard is like a multi-tool and you can use it for all sorts um and you've got a you're basically your your sheep you're a farmer and your sheep have been absconded with by thieves and you've got to rescue them and a wizard gives you the the power to invest uh energy into your to beard to be able to do stuff and all that means oh, really is it's, it's pretty much bayonetta <laughs> yeah beard and etta yeah um yeah that's basically what it is um yeah, she uses her hair for anyone who's never played bayonetta exactly. her hair picks up every important part of the attacks and stuff like that anyway sorry carry on Indeed. and um yeah so it's like you don't it doesn't mean well from what i've played so far and i've played like about two and a half hours or more it doesn't mean that you get anything that you would not see coming. It just means that the abilities that you've had in, in myriad platformers in the past, you'll you'll have in this, but they're just done cute in a cute style with your beard. And yeah, it is very cute presentation. It's in the kind of Mario vein, really. But um, yeah, obviously, and with no disrespect to the developers, it's not obviously as good looking as a Mario game. No. But it's nice looking. Uh, it's lovely, re- really lovely animations. Uh, the backgrounds are nice. Uh, there's nothing that's really wowed me, but they're they're pleasant. Um, but yeah, lots of good character design. Um, the the gameplay itself is decent enough. There's there's enough action in there to make it edge towards the sort of later Wonder Boy games rather than just be a platform game. And the mess it, the the way that you mess around with traversal with your beard, like it, it can become like a like a bungee cord for you to jump up to you know things like uh, Cap- the Captain Commando. Is that the one with the telescopic arm? Or am I getting confused? Bionic Commando. Bionic Commando. I am getting confused. That's yes. right. In my defence, it's over 30 years ago. But, um, I mean, looking at some of the games being announced at Gamescom and stuff like that, you probably could get legally distinct Bionic Commando with telescopic commando nowadays. You so. probably could, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, in summary, it's a it's a very fine platform game if you like platform games of old you'll really enjoy it it's playable on modern systems and it doesn't really bring anything new to the table but what it does it does you know very well so if it sounds like your cup of tea then beard yourself up fine add it to the wish list yeah, no, it does look it does look good actually. Um, although I do like that on the uh, trailer on Steam, there's a he walks into a room and basically walks into Luigi. I know there's a lot of that. <laughs> You'll spot a lot of familiar shapes of enemies. Yes. And stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, no, yeah, yeah, it looks interesting. It's one of those, um, I'm not in a platform mood at the moment, but I've added it to the wish list for when I am. So I don't think I've actually got any platformers on deck at the moment ready to go. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah, definitely added to the list. It looks interesting. Um, oh, uh, when did it come out? Last couple, About three, uh, three years ago. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. One of those that went yeah, completely years, under yeah. the radar. Yep. Yeah, it's it's one of those. It's uh, definitely like I say, if you're into that kind of thing, you don't want to be sleeping on it because it's uh, it's cheap at the moment as well. It's on sale. On Steam, yeah, it, it uh, it's actually it leads to a very useful point. Before I move on to my fi- my 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 final game. Um, what's really interesting um, Arco is a game that's just come out recently and uh, like it's been getting nines out across the board um, I, I reviewed it on um, our indie game roundup and I absolutely adore it it's a brilliant turn based RPG with some interesting mechanics and a brilliantly developing story really really good everyone should go and play it it's outstanding Standing. Uh, but it's like like the developers come out and said we're making these great games and it's got like it's getting like rave reviews like Edge gave it a nine as well um, it's getting rave reviews everywhere from the critics but it's got like 109 uh, reviews on Steam and it's not got great numbers selling on Steam and it's just not selling um, and it's I, I think it's, it's such a shame when you see games like Arco even the likes of sort of like this um, this beer play just go completely under the radar and only seemingly sell to a couple of hundred people 
uh, where you get absolute trash uh, from trash developers and trash publishers do game busters. Um, I, it's, it's, yeah, it's it is still such a shame to see. Um, so listen, buy beer blade because yeah, it's like it's only a fiver at the moment if you've got the spare cash, and definitely, definitely buy Arco because that is outstanding. One of the games of the year. Yeah, it's it's weird, isn't it? I mean, it, Beard Blade is kind of it's kind of niche, and you know, I wouldn't expect it to to sell amazingly well, but do decent numbers. Um, I think it's probably on the Switch. I think it is. Um, I think it should do well there. I think it should have done well there. I hope so. But with Arco, I mean, one. This is a question for the ages, really. How much does a title impact? You know how a game sells because i mean to me it's it sounds like ico or you know eco as it's pronounced um which makes you think it's a a 3d you know platforming game puzzle adventure rather than what it is and how many people are overlooking it because it's got a bit of a generic title and how do you align with what rpg titles are like so that you can get into that niche or should you even bother you know is that the way we should be doing things oh. I'm not really asking for answers. It's just a funny one, isn't it? Yeah, no, it is an interesting point because it doesn't say, it's definitely a title that doesn't say what the game is um, or, or, or anything like that. But I can't think of what you could call this um, to make it stand out and describe what it is without just being generic. Um, and I think that that that's, that will be a danger. It's, um, I think, what doesn't help? We're at a time where there's just so many great indies coming out as well. Um, I know people who are big into indies that have just said, like, I've got it on my wish list. I just haven't got time to get to it yet. Um, and I mean, I, I won't lie, you know, um, just so everyone knows, bit of honesty, I don't complete all the games that I talk about because I just don't get time. Um, I play as much of them as I can to talk about them and then I play them in my own time down the line. And Arco is one of those, though, which has held me and I've got most of the way through. And I've only got a little bit left to finish. So, it, you know, that's how good it is that even for review, I got most of the way through it. Um, so, yeah, big believer, you don't need to finish a game to review it. Just, just heads up. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what it could do, what it needs to do. It's unique in its mechanics. The story's really good. Everything about it is absolutely spot on. But at the same time, I see why it's not an easy sell for some people. Um, yeah, I don't know the answer. Yeah. If you do know the answer, like and subscribe. I don't know. That's what you do in it. That's right. It's like having the greatest podcast in the in, in, in the world and no one listens to it. <laughs> I don't know what you mean, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's like you say. I mean, there's there's definitely a pattern to how some companies name their games that kind of clicks. I don't know whether it's with RPGs and strategy. I don't know if it's like have a have a abstract word like Arco and then follow it with something like labyrinth or you know something that implies that it's not tied to another genre. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you it's, know, it's, Arco it's and Epic difficult. Journey or something like that, but even that sounds mm. really generic. I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I've worked in advertising, like graphic design, advertising, marketing and all stuff like that. Even I don't know, you know, again, I'm not the, like the greatest, but I, I don't know what the answer is because I don't like titles that are really, really long and I'll come on to one in a minute that's needlessly long. Um but yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer, Stu, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Hopefully someone does. But I say, if you're listening to this, buy Arco because it really is that good. And it, you're good. hopefully it'll get the boost at the end of the year when everyone's putting it in their game of the year lists uh, because I've got a feeling it will be in quite a lot of discussions. Yeah, I'm definitely intrigued by it. And although the... <sighs> It looks, let me say up front, it looks gorgeous. You know, it looks lovely. But I'm not a huge fan of modern games pushing the 8-bit aesthetic. I know that sounds crazy, but I, I like it when, you know, yeah, the pixel graphics, they're lovely. But I do like it where there's a lot of art in there that's 
kind of pushing the boundaries a little bit more, you know. But I know indie developer, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all that. I'm not being critical of the developer. I'm just, I don't know, it, that might have had a factor as well um, in Possibly. terms of popularity. But that's no criticism or shade on the game. The style it is works. gorgeous. It, it, it works. works in context of the game as well. So when you play the game, you understand why they've gone for that art style as well. So it's a, it's a difficult one. Yeah, a lot of people, I know you're not one of those people, a lot of people will look at the visual style and go, ugh, not doing that. Um, but it, it works. You can see why they've done what they've done. Um, I was like, hopefully it works out for them in the long run because yeah. it deserves to. Mm, I agree. Right, moving on with regards to titles, it's a bit needlessly uh, over-titled. I've also been playing Tiebreak, Official game of the ATP and the WTA. Now, that's an overly long title because you either know what a tie break is and what sport that's associated with, or you don't. The subtitle does nothing to change that. Official game of the ATP and WTA. And like, if you know tie break is tennis, you know that the ATP and the WTA are tennis, so you don't need the other bit. If you don't know that tie break is tennis, you haven't got a clue what an ATP is or WTA is. Yeah. So, yeah, weird. But anyway, titles aside, um, tie break is the official game of the ATP and the WTA. Um, now, I've got a bit of a hit miss relationship with tennis games. Um, I think Anna Call of Cove Smash Court Tennis is one of the best because it, it is, it's arcadey enough and it's like virtual tennis has that balance of making you feel like you're actually good at tennis and still arcadey so you can actually win. And then you've got things like Tennis Elbow, um, uh, Roland Gamos where you've got to be perfect and it tries to get the actual mechanics of tennis in and they're, they're brilliant like in terms of simulation but just not playable um, for your average person. And then you had uh, Top Spin 2K5. So we finally got a new Top Spin come out, and that was a microtransaction based mess because it was from 2K. And again, went too far on the <clears throat> you've got to make sure you're hitting this in the exact right moment or you're going to mess up. It's like, oh, no, that's not what I want. I want to be able, I can't concentrate on where the opposition player is, where the ball's coming back, where the ball is in terms of distance from me to the net to the other side to hit it at the right point while then choosing where it goes. It's too much to do in a video game. Uh, so tie break, does, it's just, it's got the balance spot on for me. Um, you play um, and there is timing in it. So if you're too early, you might hit it into a net or only do a soft shot or not get the shot you want. Too late, you might overhit it and hit it out uh, but you've got this window in between where you can get it where you want it to go there's a like a perfect hit as well so you'll get proper power and the disc that you want to go and rather than going oh your left stick is going to aim precisely on the court where you want it so you like if you're roughhouse like me you're like holding it to the top left trying to aim for that corner you're always going to hit it out because you can't get that balance right this just goes look We'll work it out for you based on the direction you're hitting, where you're stood, and the power you're choosing, and the type of shot. We'll, we'll choose where it goes on the court. But if you want more control, you can hold this extra button, and it opens it up and allows you to get more precise aiming if you want to do that. Pardon me. Really, really good. So you can get down, and you can play tennis. Um and what I really like about this, it's got full um, WTA career in it um, or, or um, ATP career in it. I play the women's game um, because I want to take away uh, women's positions in women's... But no, sorry, sorry, that's something else. That's a different debate altogether. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I always always pretend to play um, I, I, I like women's characters in RPGs and sports games and stuff like that because it's um, underrepresented and I like the, the ability to do it. And I can have pink hair. Um, it's great. I mean, I could have pink hair as a man, but I don't like any of the male characters. Uh, anyway... Um, and Djokovic is a prick and I'm never going to beat him because he cheats anyway um, <laughs> what was where, where was I um, yeah really good game of tennis the career mode's really good 
in terms of you go in, you set up your character, you give them a balance of like what you want them to be like, you go out, you play. And as you play, you improve. As you improve, you get you get further through tournaments. So this first tournament I played, I played three games, uh, three matches, sorry, got to a quarterfinals and lost, but went up the rankings. Um, and then you you naturally improve as you go. Really, really good. Not the, oh, I was going to bug it all into serving and serve everything. It's like it, it balances based on how you play. Love that. I love that in sports games when they could do that. Visually, really, really good. Um, but what I really like about it, um, and this is where it stands out over so many other tennis games for me, is every point you go for feels like a battle. Um, and I don't mean that like as a literal sense so you can serve aces and you can like return and just do it straight away you can dominate matches but you do feel like there's momentum and there's uh, you know your your ability to play tennis your positioning your understanding of the game really helps you um and when you get into longer rallies you feel the tension and you hear the crowd are going as well it's really good the depth of it is outstanding and it's got an interesting momentum mechanic. So I had a game, a match where I dominated the first set and won like uh, six three, and then I I messed up the first game in the second set and ended up losing it six one. I just like lost all confidence, all momentum, um, and then I went two 0 down in the third set. But when I was about to lose three, I managed to come back from three break points down to serve for the game and get the game. So I went only 2-1 down. And then all of a sudden, serves that were going out or just missing or was slow, my player started playing with more confidence and their hits were better and the opposition player was a bit more wary. And that seemed to come into the game. But I don't know if that's a feature. I don't know if that's something like they built into the game properly. But it's really interesting to know that sometimes you just have to survive and you watch if you watch any sport sometimes it's getting through a period where you've just got to survive um, and then you can build on that and this nails that absolutely perfectly um, and yeah it's probably the best tennis game I've played since like some of the early virtual tennis games just in terms of accessibility but also with the um, the uh, a good career mode the depth in how it plays it feels realistic in places it looks nice um, you could do I haven't touched this yet but there's creation tools you can create your own like tennis stadiums and things like that as well uh, absolutely brilliant um, I don't know what anyone else has been saying about it I don't even really like tennis in real life I think it's boring but it's one of those games I really like a bit like golf I like golf games, but golf is like boring to watch on TV. Um, but yeah, it's it's outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Verified on Steam Deck as well. Runs oh, smooth as butter. Absolute smooth as butter. Um, and yeah, um, I got sent the full edition. It's got all like the different outfits. So technically there is DLC to buy. Um, which gives you um, a clothing pack and there's a Djokovic challenges pack, which is an extra mode. Um, again, I would argue don't do that. Just put it in the game because apart from that, there's no microtransactions. Just stick it in the game. Um, but it's not really the core experience. It is a complete standalone Novak Djokovic thing. So if you don't like the cheating uh, COVID denier then yeah you can avoid him if you want I suppose so that that's always good but yeah I, I really like it really really like it um, and it's good to have a good sports game that's not just trying to take all the money from your pocket yeah we should, we should always avoid the donkey cheese hoarding mofo um, I've, yeah <laughs> COVID denying scum Um God, that's really going off on one yeah. of them, isn't it? We, we but promised the games game, only game. this week. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> this, this game, it looks like it's got mixed reviews. People mm. having problems with uh, the AI, not happy with it, um, oh. and the controls a little bit. I've seen, basically, what I've seen people complain about is the thing I like about it. That it's not just, right, I've worked out how to hit this ball. I was going to use that. So it changes. Like there's there's confidence in the game. So you might choose, I'm going to go to my forehand all the time. Or sorry, I'm going to try a top spin shot all the time. And that might be great. But as soon as the opposition starts hitting it back, 
it becomes harder to hit that shot. So I think that's when I've read a lot of the negative complaints, that's what it's been about. Is the oh the controls don't work the same as they do all the time. Well, yeah, because that's how sport works. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Um, I would argue the point. I usually go, yeah, I get people's points, but in this case they are wrong. Yeah. Arguing back and forth much like a game of tennis. Yes. But yeah. And much like a game of tennis. I don't know. <laughs> It has to come to the end at some point. Much like a game of tennis, much like watching John McEnroe, it's time to shut up now. <laughs> you cannot be serious. Hey. God. That that, that, that's reference. poor, that's poor, but we'll allow it. Okay. Oh, Hawkeye said it was in. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up there. So as usual, yeah, tune in to us. Make sure that you listen to all the podcasts. We've got a huge backlog now. We're on episode 236. We've got tons of them. Feel all free on YouTube to have a listen. now, all of them all of them on youtube as well absolutely check them out there check out our content on the website we're also on discord where you can join us to chat and apart from that until next time stay safe and stay sane